Hi, just a quick follow-up video on the thermal oven. I thought I'd uh, just uh, shoot some video of me assembling one of these green microcurrent boards I got from PCB Pool. And uh, yeah, there were a few uh, issues with it, which actually, um, you know, you wasn't supposed to happen. The uh, quality of silk screen is supposed to be much better than that. They assure me, and they ordinarily uh, that shouldn't have happened, and they would have actually replaced that. And ordinarily, they wouldn't have sent a single. Uh, uh, paste stencil like this it would have been the full panel paste stencil anyway I think they are sending me another one but I just wanted to um, test that I could uh, reflow a microcurrent board in my new uh, thermal oven and um, you know there's no issues at all because you know who knows there might be uh, thermal issues with the uh, parts uh, for example you know all of all of the precision components I want to make sure they're still in spec after they're reflowed in my thermal oven. I'm pretty confident in the thermal oven now, although I have to play around with using a uh, just a sheet of uh, copper in here, as I'll explain uh, later. But uh, yeah, I'll just assemble one. I won't do four, because as I said, I'd, I'd have to cut the stencil up. And well, I just, I'll just do one to uh, uh, get a feel for it, because this is not going to be my final design. I've made a, a couple of tiny little tweaks, not actually uh, circuit tweaks, just in terms of um, some hole sizes and uh, silk screen and uh, uh, stuff like that to the final version which will go out hardly virtually no difference though um, So anyway, I am just going to uh, do some uh, solder place place these by hand It won't be efficient when I actually manufacture the couple of panels I've promised to manufacture for the Kickstarter uh, Campaign I will have to set up like a semi production run. I'll get like, you know the uh, tapes of uh, Components and I'll stick them down to the bench here, and I'll be able to go boop 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 like that and sort of you know production uh, assemble these because when, you, when you're just doing one like this you've got to get the parts out they're all in little individual digi key packets or they're all on reels like this which is really annoying then you've got to extract one off and you know so it's very uh, time inefficient to just do one but that's what I'm going to do today so don't take this as an efficient way uh, to hand assemble a production board by any stretch of the imagination so the first thing I'll do is just cut it out of here I'll cut one out, and uh, because I don't want to do it in the panel, of course. So, oh, there's not one there. There's one there, and there's another. Oh, look at that! There my, ah, there my um, Exolite uh, cutters. They're only about ten bucks a pop, but I use these for sort of because they're cheap. Um, they they work okay. There's nothing wrong with the quality of these. Uh, for those who are asking, um, quite a good. Uh, pair of uh, side cutters for 10 bucks nice flush surface on them but um, yeah they are sort of semi disposable so I use them for sort of cutting uh, the sides on here see this is the reason why I don't uh, put these in the I why I put these in the corner on my production panel because look it just leaves an ugly mark on the side which you know if I was actually presenting selling that I'd have to sort of you know file that down and finish it off but you put them in the put them in the corners and the finish is uh, much nicer than that. Anyway, here we go. There we go. I've got my board held in place there on my template and I've lined up my stencil and that looks quite nice. Ready to apply the paste. Ta-da! And that looks quite okay. The uh, paste application down, I mean the smallest parts down in here, 0603 and uh, 6 pin SOT 23s, that's, that really has worked a treat. I don't have any missing pads there at all. Awesome. Ready to place. So I'll probably start with my uh, precision resistors here. And these are little uh, 0603s, as I said, I... Uh, this will not be the most efficient way to do it. I've just flipped them out there. Ordinarily, you know, if you want to do this properly, you would uh, tape these down to your bench and you'd have a proper vacuum, you know, foot operated vacuum uh, press like this, or maybe some uh, glue tack uh, tacked onto your end to lift some larger components up into place. And I'll uh, no doubt show that in future videos, but uh, for now, I'm just being uh, incredibly inefficient and uh, just placing them one by one. So R3 and uh, R13 for my 6K8s. 
So I have to be uh, actually careful there not to uh, put my hand over that. R6 and R13. Where are we? There's R13. There we go. It's flipped around here. And uh, as I said in the previous video, you don't have to be really precise because the parts should uh, reflow back into position. The surface tension of the uh, of the paste actually pulls them in place. And by the way, don't sneeze when you're doing this because your components can go everywhere. It's not pretty. So 2K2, so I need two of those as well. These are 0.05%, uh, 10 ppm resistors. They're not, uh, they're not hugely expensive, but they're not cheap either. You know, they're like 30, uh, I think 35 cents or something in uh, like, you know, a couple of thousand uh, quantity in a reel. So R11, R14. There we go. Hey, get in place there, you little turd. All right. I probably should have timed this, um, but yeah, as I said, it's not really, it's not hugely efficient. I do find 0603 a bit annoying. Um, 0402 would be a pain in the ass to hand place. Um, 0603 is getting a tad down in the annoying range, that's for sure. So that's my uh, 1K resistor. I need two of those as well. And well, I don't know what else I can tell you folks. This is not going to make for interesting commentary. That's for sure. Did I say this was a quick video? Well, you know, it never is here on the EEV blog. Uh, where are we? Sorry, I'm not just going, I'm not going to show this up close. I just, you know, really, it's not that exciting. And uh, R15, R5, where are we? R5, there we go. You really do want to start with the uh, small parts first like that. It's usually the best way to do it. Get all the pain over and done with first. And then I've got a uh, 10K precision resistor. I only need one of those. And of course, um, I, what I'm also going to do is uh, go check the data sheets for some of these. Like, for example, uh, is it on here? Yeah, there we go. This is the, uh, this is the op amp, the Max R4239. Uh, and down here, look, there you go. It uh, warn in Will Robinson, max safe temperature 260 degrees C. That's why it's uh, it's more important to get you know, to ensure that your thermal oven doesn't go over the maximum temperature rather than you know get the exact thermal profile uh, right. Especially like you know critical parts because even some data sheets. I'm not sure if this one does, but you know um, it does for say uh, voltage references for example. They will have graphs of its performance before and after reflow and you know and and you can see like the mean shift i haven't got the graph here but you can actually see the shift in um in in performance of the reference after reflow at a certain temperature and they only characterize that well based on their recommended reflow profile and stuff like that but it can really you know for precision parts it can really have a difference that's why i want to check this because this has some expensive precision parts in here and uh, you know I want to make sure the performance is still there after I put it through my reflow oven and it's better to do it on one board than uh, you know find out oops you know something's um, there's some little uh, Murphy's thing that's going to get you uh, and you know ruin your day and you don't want that to happen on a full panel of 10 boards so there you go what's this 10k I'm back I'm too busy talking and I know for a fact that one goes down in there like that. And, uh, well, it's tempting just to whack in that, but I won't. So, yep, on to the uh, SOT 23 parts now. These are my two Maxim parts. Now, the problem with these is that, by eye, I'm having a hard time seeing where the dot is. I can just see it, I think. I can just see it. If I get the right light on it, I can just see the dot and I will try and transfer over to get the correct because the thing about the six pin 
SOT 23s is that uh, they look the same. Like, you know, you can actually put them in uh, backwards. So, ooh, did I touch the solder paste there? I hope not. Yeah. Let me get around there like that. I was trying to reach right across the board. That's not very good. I'll just go double check that, that I have got that uh, dot right under the microscope. And yeah, I should have trusted my eyes. I got that correct. I was, you know, uh, just avoiding Murphy there. And uh, always double check your work because really, it, that's the point where they're really going to screw you. You always get screwed if you don't check. Assumptions never assume anything in electronics as the diode because it will lead to a great deal of hurt, I can assure you, and embarrassment if you're, uh, you know, working on a critical project or something like that, and yeah. Now here's a, uh, I have to extract this from a reel, and that can be really annoying, just be careful not to apply too much pressure on here and they all go flying. This is one of the uh, leftover reels from a previous production run because um, I, you know, I'm using most of the same parts, um, well a lot of the same parts, so this is the, uh, this is the uh, supply monitor and uh, yeah, I usually you don't order the exact number of parts, I mean um, you know, whether you're talking about passives or ones like this, if I'm doing a production run of 500, I might um, order one of these digi reels here. I, I did uh, 250, I ordered uh, 250 here. I was probably doing a production run of 200 and I ordered uh, 50 extra. That's probably more than what I needed at the time, but you do need some uh, buffer there because you the uh, assemblers will ultimately lose some and... Uh, they generally don't want to deal with that. I mean, you can, they, they can capture them, the ones that fall off. You know, they either fall off the head of the machine or just, you know, handling and loose tapes at, at the end and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, you know, they can, you know, if they're worth, you know, 10 bucks a part, then it's going to be worth their time, for example, to actually collect those and reuse them. But for something like this, that only costs, you know, 10 or 20 cents each. They're, they're just, it's not worth their time to go and collect them. It's certainly not for the uh, passive uh, parts, for, you, you know, that are worth 0.01 cents each for your passive resistors and your caps, you know. If you need uh, to make a thousand boards, then you wouldn't order a reel of a thousand, you know. You'd you'd need like, you know, 1200 on the, you know, 1100 or usually I think, um, you know, assemblers have their different uh, uh, recommendations for that, but usually it might be say 5% uh, over or something like that for your passive parts. So just be aware of that when you getting these things assembled and when your manufacturer comes back to you if you haven't done it before and please make a thousand boards here's a reel of a thousand parts and well they come back to you and say sorry I couldn't manufacture a thousand boards because you didn't give me enough parts what and uh, yep or they charge you more for it or they don't tell you and they simply charge you more for it that's more annoying because then you never learn that uh, you never learn what what they want and what they're actually charging you for. So, geez, this board is taking a lot longer than uh, it normally would because I'm too busy yapping. But there we go. Got a couple of more parts. Not a big deal. Should be done. You know, I can. I you know, my guesstimate would be for hand placing a panel of ten of these. I'm you know, my first gut feeler to guess of that would be you know like. Uh, I don't know, a couple of minutes per board. If I can't assemble one of these, one a whole panel in an hour uh, when I've got everything set up and nicely and I'm just transferring things over, then, you know, I'm probably not doing it right. And here, for example, is a reel of a thousand uh, of my um, 10 ohm precision resistors. These are 0.05%, 10 ppm, um, and they're not that... Uh, well, they're, they're not hugely expensive, but I did have to order a thousand of these when I, you know, uh, sort of, when I committed myself to doing this project, this is even much long, way before the, uh, way before the Kickstarter campaign, because you, I couldn't get these in stock um, anywhere in the world, pretty much. They are now, which is kind of annoying, but back then I made the commitment and I had to order, a re you know, I knew I was going ahead with this eventually, so I ordered 
a reel of a thousand parts even though I, you know I had no idea how many I was going to make I'm probably only going to make a couple of hundred or something like that but I really had uh, really had no choice in that at the time and uh, that's the ebbs and flows of the component procurement process one week there's parts there and well the next week there's not and you're on a you know a two month lead time it really sucks and on goes my most expensive part which is uh, my precision 0.1% um, current shunt, 10, 10 milliohm current shunt. And uh, these are, you know, four or five bucks a pop in thousand of volume. They're not, they're not that cheap. But there we go. Plonk. Down it goes. Oh, yeah, there was, uh, there was a concern. I, there was a little bit of uh, paste. Not on that pad, it wasn't fully covered, but that will uh, reflow just fine. I've only got a couple of bypass caps and some uh, Jelly Bean 270 ohm resistors left. There you go, I've got all my parts in place. Yes, there's two missing caps on there, that is deliberate, don't worry about that. And uh, I think, yeah, we're ready to reflow that. That battery holder's around the correct way. Yep, let's go to the reflow oven. Now the issue I had when I first played around with this uh, thermal oven is that some of the parts on this board uh, didn't reflow like these three resistors down there. It was because they were over one of these metal bars in here and that was causing a, you know, a, a, a sort of a cold spot along that particular bar because it has thermal mass and yeah a whole bunch of uh, people said yeah we've encountered the same problem and you shouldn't put your board directly on top of the grill like this you should have a nice even metal uh, plate like a grill on there I don't actually have that to hand right open and well it's boxing day and everything's closed so it's not like you can just go to the hardware store and pick it up so I will uh, make do just with a single sided copper clad board like this I have no idea if it's going to work well probably shouldn't use um, a copper clad board like this for you know um, like a permanent uh, basis because it's you know it's not designed to be uh, deliberately heated up and then cooled down heated up and thermally cycled like that but for the purposes of today's experiment it might he uh, help to more evenly uh, you know distribute the heat over the board so instead of having the copper directly contacting the bottom of the board don't want to do that we'll put the copper side down we'll whack it in the center like that, oh, fell right through, whack it in the center, and there's our control PCB sitting in there. I'll, I'll take that down properly so it's making uh, better contact, and then we'll put our board in there like that. There we go, and uh, almost right to go. Actually, before I do that, I'll just put my control board in there. I've taken out my microcurrent board, and I'll just use my uh, reflow uh, controller over here and I'll do a learn mode on that so there we go alright so that'll just uh, heat up to hundred degrees uh, Celsius and then as I explained in the previous video we'll get the over ramp on that uh, because I, you know when you change your thermal characteristics inside the oven which we have done with that uh, copper clad board then really you know you should rerun that uh, learn process okay the oven is cooled down and my board microcurrent board is going in and I'm going to uh, log that on this so uh, got that connected to my Agilent meter there and here we go all right we are soldering and uh, should take uh, I think uh, from last time it was like five minutes to uh, uh, ramp up or something like that finish the uh, profile and start ramping back down and we'll be able to follow that on the uh, thermal profile here well we'll be able to see it at the end anyway if I go in there and select uh, show all, then, oh, there we go. You can see it started to ramp up. That was uh, part of the uh, cooling there from the um, learn mode I did. But you can see it has started to ramp up. And, uh, well, it'll take a while. We'll come back when it's toasted. And I'd love to get a real good uh, close-up of this thing uh, reflowing for you. But, uh, unfortunately, it is in the center of this. And I've got to shoot through a glass door and it's dark in there. And... Well, you know, I can't get my macro lens because I can't shoot at that distance, etc, etc. So this is probably the best shot I can get of it. And, well, yeah, sorry, it's not that great. And the controller has just switched into the reflow phase, so it should, uh, the heater is uh, full on now, so it should ramp up reasonably quickly now. 
and it should start to reflow, you know, around about that uh, 220 C mark. It's about 178 and climbing at the moment. There we go, we've hit 220, and I think I can... Is some of that uh, paste reflowing? Probably has. It's hard to tell though, I'm just staring at the screen of the uh, camcorder at the moment. And then we're into our short dwell cycle. So it's switching the uh, element off and on again. And... That noise, that buzzer, means we're done. And we're all done and dusted. I have to uh, open the door there. Got up to a maximum of about uh, 231 on there. And we'll have a look at the thermal profile in a minute. But uh, I need this to ramp down uh, faster than what it does when the uh, door is closed because this uh, retains quite a bit of heat. So hopefully our board has reflowed. That's the plan anyway. And that looks like it has reflowed quite nicely. I like the look of that. No problem whatsoever. Even the big, um, you know, the larger thermal mass uh, battery holder there looks like it has reflowed on the edges. It's hard to see because the pad of that is not much bigger than the, uh, than the tab itself. So that's the recommended uh, footprint. And the uh, reverse lead there let's check out our main current shunt resistor down there that looks really nice not a problem that folks is a winner and there's our thermal profile and if we get in there we can actually see the top temperature just over 230 degrees c there i'd like a 232 by the looks of it um, and that precisely matches what I saw on my Agilent meter as well. That's the maximum value I got out of this thing. So I've got really good confidence that I'm not going over temperature with anything on this board. So I'm really done happy with that. And it really shouldn't matter how many of these boards I put inside there either. Um, you know, because it, it really doesn't uh, uh, change the equation at all. Check it out. That looks pretty jazzy with that olive uh, type green color i really like that and uh yes the light comes on woohoo fantastic do a couple of quick checks and uh see what it's like and that appears to be well within inside the point uh, 05 percent spec of this thing in fact it's you know it calculates out as a uh, point 0076 percent so it's basically um with inside the capabilities of the instruments which i've got here i uh, am capable of doing more precise measurements but it in in the lab here but it requires you know setting things up and it's just a little bit awkward this is uh just a basic check and yeah it's it looks good beauty and if i get out my hp 34578 well it's even closer um it should be you know 0.44 actually you know according to my uh agilent meter that's uh, measuring the current and well you know we're balls in it in